I believe some of our critical national infrastructure is at risk and getting more risky and we need to work differently together and urgently to address that. My name is Matthew Kane and I'm Director of Digital, Data and Customer Services at the London Borough of Hackney. Last year I talked to the conference about some of the lessons we'd learnt in responding to a serious cyber attack in October 2020. Now I'm able to share with you some of the findings about the difficulties of applying National Cyber Security Centre guidelines to the way that we run core business systems in a way that I believe represents significant risks to our critical national infrastructure. Now that's a bold claim, so what do I mean? As a local authority, we run some of the services that really do oil the way that our nation works. For example, elections. We hold the list of voters in our area. That list is intrinsically important for how we run elections, but it also matters for things like credit checks. As a local authority, we also run social services. You and your family might not have had direct experience of working with social services, but you will be able to empathise that those personal records contain some vitally important information, including, for example, um, about birth parents or fostering or adoption. Thirdly, uh, we're part of the benefit system. Benefits is, what, 34% of GDP in the UK, and local authority benefit payments are critically important for making sure that we alleviate the worst impacts of the housing crisis. So that's why local authorities manage critical national infrastructure. Following our cyber attack, we wanted to make sure that we build back safer. For us in Hackney, that meant things like using Chrome OS by default. It meant putting two-factor authentication in place in front of all line of business applications, having a zero trust network. But what we learned was some of the most commonly used software applications that were depended upon by all local authorities simply couldn't do this without extraordinary efforts. We learned of software applications that don't support two-factor authentication yet store personally identifiable information. We learned about software systems that are commonly used which don't have data encryption at rest. We learned about systems which require a flat network in order simply be to be able to run core functions like printing. And that's why I believe critical national infrastructure is at risk and why we need to act urgently to do something differently. This has got all the hallmarks of being a wicked problem. It isn't anyone's fault um, that this, this situation is now in place. But we can't continue like this. We need a different approach from central government. Yes, it's true that local authorities keep buying these systems, but we're allowed to, and these systems continue to be cheap. These systems are commonly used across the whole sector, and yet there isn't a diversity of choice in the software vendor market. We don't put enough emphasis on the importance of cyber security, with it very much being seen as someone else's problem, rather than a collective responsibility across the whole sector. And so we need to work differently together. And whether it's the war in Ukraine or the Log4j crisis, I'd like to think that the last year has shown us why this is urgent, why this simply can't be a matter for more conversations and more people imploring action. And so I'm asking you as people attending this conference who understand the importance of cyber security to use your influence on policymakers as citizens to make sure that cyber security is at the heart of what we do as a nation, but make sure that it isn't just something added on, something worried about by technologists, but becomes a part of the expectations that citizens have with us. Because if public services aren't trusted by citizens, then we can't deliver good, effective public services that achieve the outcomes we want to see. Thank you.